कितने साल पहले इतनी दूर Good morning everyone. Welcome to Serendipity Arts Virtual, a web-based festival presented by Magma HDI, Truth Must Be Told, and co-presented by Global Asia. Thank you for joining us today. We are very pleased you could join us for today's workshop, The Perfect Brew, a tea workshop presented by Magma HDI and conducted by Anamika Singh, who will talk about the art of brewing the perfect cup of tea, followed by a sneak peek at how to make mal tea. A tea drinker by birth and a tea taster by profession, Anamika Singh has introduced new infusions with a mix of natural flowers and herbs to the Indian market. Having launched her own brand, Anindi Himalaya Tea, she conducts tea tasting ceremonies, conferences and events in India. Anamika Singh has spent over 20 years in the tea industry, starting in Darjeeling as an apprentice under her father, Mr. A.K. Singh, a world-renowned tea specialist. She now invests a great, greater part of her year in the family-owned tea gardens in Himachal Pradesh. Research and development in her workshop brings out the finest nuances of tea manufacturing and blending. With that, we're very excited to have you with us today, Anamika. Over to you. Good morning. Thank you so much. Uh, am I audible? Am I visible? Yes, we can see you. Perfect. Yeah, and can you hear me? Absolutely. Okay, super. Yes. All right. Good morning. Good morning. What a lovely morning. Thank you for joining um, on this winter day. Uh, it's very cold in Dharamshala, but uh, we are warm and snug inside. And um, had it been some other time, probably you could have been at the estate and done a nice workshop there itself. But we'll leave that for another time. And I just want to thank you, uh, Serendipity. I want to thank all of you for joining in. Um, and uh, let's get started. What we are basically going to work on is uh, the two things that I'm going to do. One is break the myths of uh, the various myths that are there as far as tea is mm -hmm. concerned. And uh, the other that I'm going to do is just a very quick um, go through on how you can make an amazing, delicious mulled tea. Uh, which is where people, you know, they have a lot of mulled wine, but we will go about making mulled tea. And, but that'll come later. Uh, just a little bit about, uh, you know, what the tea is all about and, you know, the, the vast subject that it is. Um, <clears throat> see, now the thing is this, as far as tea is concerned, so there's, it's endless. Uh, it, you can just keep on and on going about it because it's a beautiful beverage. The world makes it these days. And I mean, as far as manufacturing, producing, um, you know, uh, making various blends are concerned. But one of the things that I want to start with, and I hope this will stay with you for many, many years when you have your tea, is you must know your source. You must know where your tea is coming from. 
So when we talk about uh, tea, like say we say Darjeeling tea, we say Assam tea, we talk about Nilgiri, we talk about Chinese, Japanese, Taiwanese, uh, Korean. What we don't uh, understand is we're talking about the place, we're talking about the location, we're not talking about the tea itself. That's a kind of tea, but where are you getting it from? Where is the source? What is the estate? Where is the estate? What kind of tea? So if you love your tea, and even if you spend money in buying it or you don't, the fact that it connects to your heart and you feel good about it, you must know where it's coming from. So whenever you pick up any caddy, any box, any, well, any different kinds of fabulous looking uh, gifts, the, the kind of smell that in, entices you. But what I would say is have a look at the label, read the label, understand what are the ingredients, understand where it's coming from. If it's from a TST, they should write the name of the TST because there's a relevance to it. You know, It's a good thing if the TST name is written and you know where it's coming from, you can imagine what the tea is going to be like. So important to read the label and get through with what is getting added into the tea? <clears throat> Pardon me, I think I need some hot water for this. Uh, the throat is just a little rough this morning. Um, so to begin with, uh, one very important thing is the source. The other important thing, well, I just had water. Water is extremely, extremely important when you make tea. Um, water, they say, is the mother of tea. So you give a lot of respect to the water. You don't let it just pick up any water and just make tea out of it. Because if your tea is right, and if your method of brewing is right, and you get all of that correct, but your water isn't right, as in, now if I tell you about the pH balance, you'll say, now we're never making tea again. So I'm not getting into the details, but what you must understand is whenever you heat water for tea, and I mean tea without sugar, without milk, the leaf tea, the tea which is not chai, what you must always remember is that you never boil your water for tea, okay? So we always tend to leave the water, it keeps boiling, then we'll add in some tea, and then we'll always think that when the colors come through, the tea is ready. Well, so one important thing, you never boil your water for tea. Every tea as an individual is like you and me, is like our neighbor, is like the third person. So you treat the tea that, you, that you're infusing, <clears throat> as an individual. So the different kind of tea that, that are there in the market, well, numerous, hundreds, thousands, each tea comes with its own temperature. Each, each tea comes in with a quantity that you're adding in to make the brew. It's never, uh, you know, it's never just, um, you know, like an andaza, like it's never just a pinch. It's never, there is always a certain proportion involved with the number of tea leaves that go in as in the quantity, as per the quantity of water. <clears throat> so to make things easier, what you have to do is when you heat the water and the bubbles come on the side of the pan, that's around 90 to 95 degrees, switch it off and use that water, okay? Because if I tell you that for black tea, you need around 95 degrees, for white tea, you need 80 degrees or 60 degrees, you'll never make it. So just to make things simpler and easier, just take water that has been heated, not boiled, till the water bubbles come on the side of the pan and switch off the gas, switch off your electric kettle if you have, pay attention with the ear when the water kind of just kind of starts bubbling a little. <clears throat> and then what you got to do is you need a kettle. Okay, so now we're going step by step. You know the source, you've picked up your tea leaf, now you know the water. Now what you have to do is you need to figure out the proportion. So the proportion is 200 to 250 ml of water around a mug, it would take in around 2.5 grams to two grams of tea, okay? <clears throat> now it's a very simple thing. When it comes down to tea, there are various kinds of tea. Okay, I've just done something very interesting out here for you to see. I don't know whether it's visible, I think it is. Uh, this will come to you later, but I just want to kind of just let everybody know that, you know, tea by itself is in its own world. I mean, it's like huge. So you'll have the green and you'll have the black and then you'll have the oolong, you'll have the white tea and you'll be like, and I'm like, what the hell are all these things? Like, I know green and black, but what's oolong and what's white? We'll come to that later. What I want you to know, and it's a very simple thing, but many people don't, want, don't know about it and I want you to understand, is that when it's a green or black tea, it's not that the green, the leaves in the tea estate are green and the leaves in the tea estate are black and that's how the tea is made. 
So the tea is made from the same bush, okay? The bushes can be an Assamica variety or the China variety. <laughs> of course, they are fruits. Mm -hmm. But what happens mm -hmm. is it's the way you make that particular lot of tea that comes from the estate. Mm -hmm. The method of manufacturing is what makes it different. Mm -hmm. So very, very important. When you think of what tea you want to have, what tea you want to sip, it's important to understand two or three things. One, of course, the heart. What is your heart tell you? What do you feel like having? Okay, forget everything that an army called the world tells you. If your heart tells you you want to have it, just have it. Forget it. But when you get into technicalities, remember one thing. It's very important to pick up a tea that suits the weather, that is not cooling to the body. Like now the weather is already cold. If you feel like having mint, it's fine, but something warmer, like perhaps add some ginger to it or add some ashwagandha to it, add some black pepper to it. Don't want to add anything, just let the tea be by itself and just have it just by itself, okay? Or if you have lemon balm, add a little bit of lemon balm to it. The lemon grass and the mint and the lights, keep it for spring, keep it for summer, okay? So now when you talk about how do you make a perfect cup of tea, okay, that's a very important thing and it's a very simple thing. It's just a question of, understanding and giving it time. Very important to give it time because if you want everything quick, then unfortunately you won't get your perfect cup of tea. You'll get a cup of tea that'll be different today, different tomorrow, and it'll never be consistent, okay? So how do you get a perfect cup of tea every time you make it? So what do you do? One very important thing, mm. pardon me because of this, I'm just a little parched. So, you get various kinds of kettles, okay? You get teapots, different kinds of kettles. You'll get some that are made with steel, some that are made with iron. I prefer either clay or I prefer a nice glassware. Why do I like glassware? Because well, you see what is in it and you see the color of it. And I always feel that, yes, I always feel that when you make tea, uh, you always see it with your eyes before your hand touches it. So that's one thing. That's why I love my glassware. And my fondness for clay has developed because I have very dear friends based in Pune, curators of clay, and they make amazing clay pots. And they've made some exceptionally good ones for me. So I love that. It's a very earthy feeling. And there's a certain, well, there's a certain connect that you feel towards the ground. And that kind of comes through beautifully. Okay. So as far as the teapot is concerned, these days, what we do is we have these kind of strainers that go into the teapot. Yeah, so that goes into the teapot and the strainer is inbuilt. In or like how we used to have the olden times, the strainers, you have these strainers and you get bamboo ones. Try and pick up something that connects with you, that you feel that you want to spend time infusing the tea. Because I always feel uh, nowadays, thankfully, we have the time. But there have been times where people just don't take out, you know, that kind of quality time for themselves. And I feel that the four minutes that you infuse for your cup of tea is luxury. It's pure luxury. It's something that, it's something that you can spend time either thinking, writing, just doing nothing. And you're just off your phone, everything. That's just the time between your cup of tea and you. So it's a very special and a personal and a beautiful relationship that you can develop. So now what do we do? I'm going to infuse a cup of tea for you so that you know how to do it. So you have a pot. You can pick up any pot you want. There's one that I have out here, but that's for something else. So we take this. I take my tea. Remember one more very important thing, and I'm glad it just struck me. Whenever you keep your tea, remember to keep it in an airtight container. Okay? So tea is such a, an ingredient that it will absorb any smell. Smell of um, coffee, smell of garlic, smell of, even if you take your hand and you take your tea from your hand and your hand has um, perfume or cream, your tea is going to take that. So hence, spoon, caddy, kept in an airtight container, away from direct sunlight, no strong smell, so don't keep it in the kitchen. I know everybody keeps their tea in the kitchen, but don't keep the tea in the kitchen because every time you open it, and you take in your spoon and you put it into whatever you want to make your tea in. There's a smell that is a certain smell that is there in the kitchen that's going to bound to get in. And you won't realize it in a day or two in a week. But after maybe around three months or maybe more, you'll start saying, you know what? The tea just doesn't taste the same. It doesn't smell the same. So 
very, very important to keep an airtight container away from dark forest. Sorry for that. Um, and in a dark place and not in the kitchen. So what do you do? Reuse. Again, be very, very careful. It has to be dry. The minute it has a little bit of moisture, the moisture is going to go into the tea and it's going to get moldy. Okay? So you take a teaspoon. You get these teaspoons or you, you just pick up any teaspoon that you have at home. And I will take a teaspoon of this tea and I will keep this aside. And I already have some heated water that's around 90 degrees. I'm going to pour this. But before I pour, let me tell you something. The minute I pour, the tea leaf starts infusing in the water, which means it starts letting out its aroma, its taste its body, it starts giving out into this water. So how do you know when a tea is done? How do you know that, you know, this is my perfect cup of tea. It's done, it's beautiful, I can smell it, it looks right, and I know when I taste it, it'd be perfect. How do you know? Every time you'll start assuming that maybe it's done, you know, the color looks beautiful, I think it's done. It's been a while since I've kept it, I think it's done, no. What you need to do is you need to time your number of minutes that you've infused the tea in, okay? Various kinds of tea, various kinds of number of minutes, okay? I know this gets complicated a bit, but no. If you know that you're going to have, a, say, a green tea that you've picked up from the market, you've read the label, it's a leaf tea, what you're going to do is you're going to say, okay, three minutes you feel You've had it today and you feel three minutes, it didn't work. You know, I want a little stronger. Tomorrow, keep it for four minutes, but time your number of infusions, number of minutes. Okay, it's very important. If you don't time it right, then every day you will never get that perfect cup of tea and you'll get fed up. And you'll say, oh God, I don't know how these guys make it. Okay, so I'm going to put in water, fill it up. Okay. Um... And I'll also tell you why it looks so pretty, why I like this a lot. Okay. Now, the minute I've added, I have something called a tea timer. I'll tell you more about it, but in the meantime, let me just cover this. Now, the tea timer or your cell phone, doesn't matter. It's three, four, and five. You also get two, three, four, one, two, three. But I prefer the three, four, and five because most of the teas that I have either get infused for three minutes or four minutes or five minutes. Now, this particular tea, is a beautiful, delicate black tea that is infused with lavender flowers and lemongrass. So my favorite, the first tea I infused ages ago, but it's close to my heart. So I'm going to infuse it for four minutes. Now you see this sand timer. Now this is four minutes. The minute this comes down, four minutes done, and I will pour myself a cup of tea. All right. So we will let this infuse. Now this is the time that is yours. From the time you infuse, you've added the water, You've, you're just sitting and looking out the weather, hearing the bird chirp, or get the phone at that time. And unless you're timing yourself from the phone, that's another thing. But otherwise, don't look at your phone. Just be by yourself and enjoy that moment with you and the tea and see it let out its color. Look at that. How beautiful. It's still going to take some time and turn into a beautiful golden sun, sunshine kind of a yellow. So, what I want you to understand one very important thing, and I get a lot of it from lots of people who want to ask that, you know, when they say, I love my black tea. Um, I love my black tea as well, but then I like to specify what kind of black tea. So you have the gold patti, which is the daliwala patti, which is which you make chai, like the CTC. Then you have black tea, which is made in the first season, which is like in the month of March and April. And that is made from the China variety of bushes, which is the long leaf. This is what it looks like. Now, can you imagine this being a black tea? So there are different kinds of black tea. This particular one is there. And then you have something that grows that we make in the month of um, July, August. And that's another stronger black tea. We call that the second flush. Um, so in the second flush, there is more body. It's darker in color. It's more brisk. In the, in the palette. While in the first flush, which is the first pluck of the season in the month of March that we make, the tea is um, fruitier, it's more flowery, it's more smooth, it's 
subtle, it's very delicate. So this too is a black tea. Now what I've done, I hope I'm not losing a lot of time, no, we still have some time. I'm going to tell you, look at this. Can you see this? These are all various kinds of black tea. So I want you to see and figure out and see for yourself that the color is different, hence the leaf is different, the taste will be different, and the aroma will be different. So next time when you say, I want, I love my black tea, two things, try and figure out where you're getting it, the black tea. The second thing, try and specify what kind of black tea, okay? So the more you specify, the more your knowledge with the tea will vary, it will develop. And you will start finding certain kind of teas that you like more than the rest, even though they come in the bracket of black or green, as a matter of fact. Okay. So very, very important that try and narrow down to various things that you like as far as tea is concerned. Because tea on its own is a vast bracket. So you have to narrow down whether you like the black, if you like the black, do you like the first flash? Do you like the second flash? Do you like Dudwali chai? What are the various kinds? And eventually, from where are you getting it? So we're nearly done. You can have a look. I hope you can see the middle one. That's nearly done. Now, very, very important thing I do have to, I am just going to, okay, I'm going to use this and I'm going to use this, okay? Let me remove this for the time being. Why I've taken two, forgive the various sizes, but what I wanted you to do is I want to teach you how to serve tea, okay? Now, what happens is when we serve tea, now we made this infusion. Now, look at this color. Isn't this pretty? It's beautiful. So, it's a beautiful, sunny, soft, golden. It's more like a winter sunshine. So, what do we do? When you pour tea, you never pour the first cup full and you never pour the second cup after that. What do you do? You always pour half like that. And then you pour it again. Now tell me why would you do something like this? Tell me why would you pour half and half? Well, very simple. The strength or the leaf as such, they settle in the bottom. So what happens is your lower portion of the water gets stronger compared to what's on the top. So give it a little swirl, yet even then, this lower portion will be stronger. So when you pour, the first cup will be very, very light because it's the top portion, and the bottom portion will go into the second cup, and that will be... There will not be an equal distribution between the flavor, between the taste, between the texture. So it's important to balance it out. There are three people, go half, 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 and then top it up. Four people do exactly the same. One person will enjoy this. Okay, so very, very important. Okay, guys, I'm going to try this. Smell. That leads me to a very interesting thing. So I see a lot of people tell me, oh, we love that particular tea, strawberry, something, something, chocolate, uh, peach, kiwi. What you got to understand is when you smell and something that smells too strong, where you don't see what is mentioned, if it says chamomile with lavender, or it just says a certain kind of black tea, and when you visually look at it and you don't see it, you don't see the flowers, you don't see the element, you know there's something wrong, right? Or if they say that it's there, but it's not visible, then there's a certain kind of oil that's added, or a certain kind of artificial essence that's added, right? So it's very, very important that when you pick up a tea, and you see, well, hopefully what they write is what they give. And uh, when you go back home, have a look at, open the packet and have a look. And by then, if you've already bought it and it doesn't, it doesn't show what is written, it's too bad because, well, the company should be honest. Honesty is important. What you say, what you do is what should be delivered, right? So I'm going to take this sip. And just a, just a small little thing. I know we barely have time and I'm trying to kind of bring in a lot, but just to give you an idea of how you will taste. I've been doing this for 30 years now. Every time I say it's um, 30, I think it's 31 or 32 now. But very, very important when you sip tea,
Oh, stunning. You have to get the mouth feel of it. You don't gulp tea. One very important thing, a lot of important things. <laughs> so one of the things is this. When you sip tea, say I use the word sip, you drink your alcohol, you drink your coffee, you drink your 20,000 things under the sun. But when you sip, when you have your tea, it's sipped. Okay. There is a certain thought, there's a certain emotion that goes in. There is, there might be an adrenaline rush for a bit, but there's a whole lot of soul that is there in tea. So when you sip it, just for a second, you want to relax, you want to meditate. This is the best meditation, believe me. Close your eyes and just take in that sip of tea and let it trickle down your palate, down to your throat and just feel the warmth. It is brilliant. Okay, so next time you have your tea, spend those two minutes, four minutes for infusion and two minutes just to get an idea about what it feels like to have that tea. Okay, so you're not drinking your tea, you're sipping your tea. Okay. Mm. So you know when the tea connects. Okay. Now this is as far as the teapot is concerned. We talked about the quantity of water, the spoon, the source, the time, and how do you serve it, right? And we also spoke about the storage, how do you store your tea? Very, very important. Now there are lots of things that are happening when you talk about the health benefits of tea. Lots of people talking about it. Um, some true, some not true. Tea as such as a beverage is a magic potion. As long as you know where you're getting it from, how you're infusing it, um, what kind of tea that you're using. Okay, that's extremely important. But by itself, it won't do magic. You have to give Emphasis to what you eat, to how much you exercise, to how much you step out and don't take stress, to these various things that are there in life. If you take care of all of the rest, tea works excellently as a boost. Okay, So very, very important thing when you talk about tea and when you talk about the health benefits, read what is written again on the label. Try and figure out whether it suits you or not. And it's very, very important for every company that gives out its tea as a package tea to things that go into it. So if you're allergic to something, just, just be careful about reading. We just generally pick up tea as per the packaging and as per the smell. We don't read. So that I say is very, very, very important. All right. So we have our tea. We have our um, uh, the infused tea. And I have spoken to you about the various kinds of tea okay so this darkest one is the one that is your masala chai it's like your dudwali chai okay this particular one is um an autumn tea the one that i spoke about june july so this one is that this one so just look at the colors and huh? you can see the difference so this is a leaf tea long leaf tea this is the gold patti again black both black and this is your first flush so first flush the first pluck i talked about the delicate beautiful um, black tea. So all black teas, but different in nature and in body and in taste and in texture. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to now tell you is a very simple way of how you could probably enjoy your tea uh, besides just having it by itself, which could be, you know, infusing a hot cup of tea. Uh, when the weather is right and if any of you feel like connecting, do feel free to tell me and uh, to connect with me and I will teach you how to make a good um, I don't like to call it iced tea because um, ice dilutes. I like to call it cold tea. So I'll teach you how to make cold tea there. But as of now, so what I'm going to do is um, I spoke about the mulled wine and I'm excited about it. We've been doing it. Now we used to do workshops uh, when, well, not at the COVID times, but prior to that, we used to do a lot of that. And this was one of the favorite things that I really enjoyed making because it kind of just gives a different uh, dimension to tea. So you know that, right? Because the tea, you can make it, you can just have it by itself. You can make a cocktail out of it. You can make a nice hot beverage without the alcohol. You can use it as a drizzle over cakes. You can make a you know, reduction out of that. You can even baste it uh, and, you know, your tofu, your paneer or your meat. So by itself, it's amazing. Which then takes me to a very interesting point that, you know, we always think tea, as far as India is concerned, because tea is grown, I had this, lovely gift which a friend sent from Scotland. They grow tea in Scotland. Can you believe that? It's amazing. So she sent me something and Hawaii grows tea. 
uh, England, um, France is growing tea. Can you beat that? So it's amazing the number of places that are growing tea. And this is besides Taiwan, Korea, Japan, um, Burma, Malaysia, um, you know, China, all these places, they, of course, they grow their own tea. Um, but in India, so whenever I begin my workshop, then it's face to face, I always I ask people that, you know, what are the various areas that grow tea in India? And most of them know Neil Giri's and they know Assam, they know Darjeeling. A little bit about, uh, a few of them know that Kamra makes tea as well. So I'm in Dharamshala, we have an estate. Here, Manji Valley Tea is 16 years now. Yeah. And prior to that, we went Darjeeling, as uh, was mentioned. And uh, But what we forget is there's so many other areas that make some decent tea for the Northeast. So there is Arunachal, there's Manipur, there's Nagaland, there's Meghalaya, they make tea. Then uh, when you come towards, uh, then there is Sikkim. A uh, very dear friend of mine has a beautiful estate in uh, Sikkim as well. Oh, when you talk about the other areas, there's Nepal as well. So, where, but in India, there is a small little area where, uh, you know, which is Bihar. So Bihar has a small area that grows tea. Can you beat that? Orissa had tea sometime back. This was around, I think the, there was an issue with the government and it unfortunately wasn't looked after. So they closed down um, around seven to eight years ago. But the fact that, you know, all of these areas have tea, it's interesting. So what I would definitely recommend is, I know it isn't easily available to get in touch with me. If any of you want to try various kinds of tea, I'd be more than happy to send some because it'll just open up your palate and make you figure out that, okay, besides an Assam and Darjeeling, there's more to it. And that's my biggest thing that I want people to understand that in India uh, is just not Assam and Darjeeling in India. There's a whole world out there in India itself. So you can try different kinds of tea and uh, get a feel of it, compare notes, see it for yourself. You don't have to be a sommelier. You don't have to be a tea taster to understand what connect. Just have it. And if you don't understand, I'm there just, reach out and ask questions. I'd be more than happy to educate more about tea. So now we're talking about the mild tea. So what I've done is like the way I infused tea in the pot. Similarly, you can take a black tea if you want, a nice black tea, but not a CTC, not the masala chai. Take the other one, the long leaf. We have a Christmas tea that we've done. So what I've done is I've infused Christmas tea in the teapot but infused instead of five minutes, I've used infused it for 15 minutes. I want a strong brew, okay? So this is the Christmas tea or the black tea that I've used. And what I've done is in this, I'm going to probably make it in this. So what you can do is you can take this, take it into a small vessel and put it on the stove, okay? Because right now I'm not doing any of that, but just to give you an idea, take a little bit of that and imagine that this was a stove, okay? In this, I don't know whether you can see. I hope this is clear. Here, what I've done is in the blend itself, there's already cinnamon, there's clove, there's um, the vanilla, there is some star anise, all of that. But if you don't have any of that and you don't have the blend, don't worry. Take the black tea, which you've infused, put it in a small vessel, put it on the stove. And then what you do is you add a little bit of the cinnamon, you can add some star anise. All of this we have at home lying in the cupboard, right? So just add all of this and imagine this to be on the stove with a little heat and it's bubbling. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of orange juice to this. Let it keep bubbling. Doesn't matter. Take a little bit of, uh, that was apple juice, sorry. And this, I'm just adding a little bit of the orange juice and let it keep simmering on the fire. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some orange slices to it. Okay, so just a couple of it. And imagine that this being on the fire is just keeping on boiling. So around 10 to 15 minutes, just on low fire, just let it keep on and on and on boiling. And after some time, it starts reducing, getting a little marginally, a little bit more body. Then what you do is if you feel that you don't want it too sweet, you don't want any other sugar element added to it, just let the juices be there. And then what you can take is take this ice glass. Gift yourself something nice and warm, okay? So this is hot. You take it into a nice glass, which is 
You can take this, you can take a nice whiskey glass if you want, whatever you feel like. And add in a slice of your orange. And you're ready to go. Yeah. So this is nice and hot and perfect for your evening or even during the day. So what happens, it just gives a different element. There's spices in it that give a different note. It's warm, just perfect for winters. Okay, so you can have this. And similarly, what you can do is you may avoid any of the juices in case you don't have the juices, just add you know, your spices. And uh, that's about it. And uh, serve it hot and have it in the evening or sit around the fireplace or uh, sit with your friends, wherever you are. If you're somewhere at the beach, well, just take a flask of it and nice and hot and uh, have it. Just one thing that I wanted to talk to you about, and uh, let me just move this. This is something that I, I feel that you should know. So now let me see whether you can see this. I hope you can see it. Can you see this? Um, okay. So I'm going to make it easier. So, so can you see this? Can you see these leaves? Can you see these leaves? Yeah. So these are leaves. These are the tea. This is the black tea and autumn tea that is actually in the leaf form. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the tea bag. Okay. So this is a tea bag that I have. I've removed the label. I don't want any... I don't want anybody getting back at me. Everybody knows. Just open, go home and open a tea bag and you will see what is in a tea bag. Why I say this is it's so much important. I mean, if you try picking up leaf tea, spend time in choosing an element which will make it easier for you to infuse. I know this is convenience, but avoid this completely because of the fact the kind of leaf that goes in isn't of high quality, isn't it will not give you that benefit that you're looking for. It's just gonna be something hot and yellow or brown. That's about it. So I wanted to see what it looks like. Okay. I hope you can see. You saw what was earlier. Now can you see this? Can you see this? I hope you can see this. Yeah. So this was what goes inside a tea bag. So I want you to understand certain things that when you are enjoying something and you love something, just spend some time and Take out, go out, do a little hunting, figure out what you want. Now that you can't go out, get online and see this. Everything's available online. Just go and pick up a leaf. Avoid these tea bags. Don't have these tea bags. Okay, so you saw the difference between the two. Now, just one more thing. Uh, so when you talk about chamomile tea, Okay, so when you say, uh, you would have heard people talk about chamomile tea or the flower. So what happens is when, uh, unfortunately, there are even boxes that have written chamomile tea, but when you open it, there's no tea in it. It's just flowers in it. So that, you should know, is not tea. When something doesn't have camellia senescence in it, it is not tea, it's a tisane. Okay, so for example, something like this, and that will be a tisane, you should be able to see the flower. Okay. And something like this, which is a tea itself, you can understand this can be called a tea, this cannot be called a tea. Okay, so next time when you would look into a tea box and you want to figure out, figure out what kind of tea that you want, just read and figure out whether you want it with the tea or without the tea. All right. So that's that. As of now, um, I did, I think I've told more some of the very important things that you need to know as far as tea is concerned. Um, any thoughts, any questions that you have that you would like to me to talk about or address? Hi, Anandika. Uh, there Hi. are a couple of questions in the chat box, but there's yeah. one that uh, Karan's asked, I think, specifically about the mul uh, multi process. Right. Karan uh, is here with us. Would you like to um, unmute and ask the question or should I could read it out as well? Hi, sure. No, it was just a question about the time uh, for the for the infusion. I think you'd mentioned right. 15 minutes is right. uh, but in my experience, when you leave for more than five or six minutes, it tends to get a bit bitter, doesn't it, tea? It does. So here's the thing, it won't get bitter, it'll just get stronger. So depending again, so if you have the tea that is the right quality of tea, tea shouldn't get bitter, so to speak. It'll just get more brisk and more strong. Okay, here you're not leaving it on. When you've infused it in the 
you haven't left it on the fire. You've just taken hot water and let it steep in it. So if you were to do it the four minutes and by the time you add the juices, then what's going to happen is you're going to get a very diluted tea and you'll get more of the taste of the juice rather than the tea. Understood. Thank you. Yeah. We have a few more questions. Um, yeah. Promil uh, has asked a question regarding reheating the tea um, as it may not be very hot after infusion. Promil is also here with us. Um, right. Hi. Hi. Uh, can you please tell me, like, how can we reheat it? Because so a lot of flavors are. Many... Yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, like once, you know, flavors are infused and, you know, it's not very hot. And yeah. in these days, we want something very hot. Right. What we can do for that. Right. So when it comes to malt tea, only for malt tea, no other tea. Don't reheat it. Don't use a microwave. Uh, don't do any of that as far as tea is concerned. But just because it's a malt tea, you let it, you can get it back on the flame and you can heat it. Because there is an element of all the juices. And it's interesting because what happens is when you heat it again, the juice in its own caramelizes. The sugar content in the juice kind of caramelizes. And it gives a very beautiful taste to the mulled tea. So you can reheat as far as the mulled tea is concerned. That's about it. But when you talk about any other kind of tea, uh, I've even uh, been asked that if you can... you. Know, like a muslin bag or if you have some tea leaves already lying in where is my teapot oh there it is so there's already some lying in it and i want to infuse it maybe for the second time but later in the evening i wouldn't do that i would remove this if i want to infuse it again i could do it immediately i've had my cup of tea and i can add more hot water and you know you that's done but if you were to want to add hot water later it doesn't work so for multi it's all right, but that's about it. Thank you. You will. Um, there's another question that Karan had placed earlier in the session. I believe this was regarding the first half that um, we were looking at various infusions. Right. Um, and he'd asked, where, well, in case of milky tea, is there a formula for ideal or max proportion of milk to water? And similarly for leaf to water, if there's a proportion to follow. Yes. Right. For uh, definitely, let's begin with the with the uh, the leaf and the water, the one without the milk and without the sugar. So normally it's two to two point five grams to two hundred mL to two hundred and fifty mL of water. That is the proportion as far as leaf is concerned. Now what happens is when you just do it by the teaspoon, um, when you have a whole leaf, like supposing I have some lying out here with me, I just kept some. Uh, if you take the white tea. Now the white tea, if you see it, it's it's a full leaf, right? It's a bud. So if I were to take a teaspoon and try adding it, I will still never get it to 2, 2.5 grams. So it's better if there is some way when you're doing teas that are, well, that are exclusive, that you love, uh, try and measure it and then use it. Uh, but otherwise, when it comes down to, um, you know, any of your green or your black, it's a two grams or one teaspoon to uh, 200 ml of water. Um, as far as your milk teas are concerned, I'm not particularly fond of that. Um, but normally I have seen people do, uh, if you're making a three cup tea, then it's one cup of milk. And there's some others who do a one and a half cup. And there are yet some others who will do a two cup of milk and just one cup of water. And I also know a relative who does only milk. So yeah, to each his own, I guess. Uh, and I think the best teas, milk teas are made at home, at various homes, because they've just got it right. So um, it depends on you know how strong or how milky you like, as far as uh, milk tea is concerned. Um, Niketa had a question as well. Um, yeah. Niketa is also with us, if you'd like right. to ask. Hi, yeah, hi. Am I audible? Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, I mean, uh, is it important for a tea to be organic? Because, you know, normally the pesticides may uh, negate the benefits of the tea, you know. So how do we source truly organic tea? Right. So the thing is this. If you can, if you can get your hands on a good organic tea, that is certified organic because there are a whole lot of things that are there in the market that just say that it's organic, but they don't have any certification. Uh, so if you can get your hands on that, perfect. If you can get your hands on a tea that is natural, that's also good. 
but it's a tough one because the thing is that many people out there just have written it organic so you it's difficult to figure out you know whether it is or whether it isn't but if you find one then it's for keeps just stick to that brand then no the thing is uh, is tea also a very heavily fertilized crop yes yes it is completely there it's fertilized pesticides everything under the sun there are a lot of tea estates that do that as well so it's very very important that you um, so that's the thing you if you come back to the source you have an idea about where the tea seed is what you you just get an entire picture from that one point figuring out what the source is and not, because, uh, uh, not normally not. organic farming for tea and coffee is not a viable option you know no, like it's very like very few farms practice so one can't really indulge into teas that much you know because the amount of pesticides and or fertilizations that involved right. because and yes yeah, one and there's one more question what kind of black whole leaf tea is compatible with milk with the addition of milk you know what kind of because i'm not interested in uh, drinking ctc so, tea so uh, come back to the this right so completing your first uh, the first question that you had it is very difficult to sustain as such from a, in an organic plantation but there are a lot of people who are doing it there are a lot of tea estates who are doing it in in towards our area towards darjeeling some parts of assam as well nilgiris as well there are people who are doing it because everybody understands especially the people who are manufacturers and producers they understand the relevance of this kind of uh, tea production so it's not only uh, you know how viable as far as the mula is concerned the money is concerned but also what returns it gives you what kind of brand building it gives you what kind of relationship it creates so that is an important part that people have started understanding it takes a while for it to turn organic but there are people who have been doing it for quite some time and there are people who are still carrying on with it um coming back to your uh, the tea with milk which is not a ctc but a leaf tea there is something called an autumn tea it's a black tea uh slightly you, you know this is the one this is the one can you see this yeah yeah so so the thing is when you make tea which are leaf tea with milk it becomes difficult to put it onto the to the stove and add milk and add the tea and keep getting it like boiling it and expecting the color and the briskness to come that won't come in with something like this you can add a dash of milk like an english breakfast and then you can expect a hint of milk to be there okay expected to be like a kadak chai that doesn't work with this okay thank you you welcome yeah you know anamika i must say that we've all been gazing longingly at this beautiful spread oh. um, and with christmas round the corner the red mug has been drawing everyone's eyes this <laughs> was renas asked yes renas asked this is a friend of mine diva rajpal she gave this to me and i just love it it's my favorite mug uh, and it just kind of perfect it baby school outside it is And uh, Prina wanted to know where we could get accoutrements like these cool mugs or the tea hour glass, which I'm also quite right. interested in getting. So um, you know there are uh, there is something called the butlers in Delhi, and uh, there is also uh, Dev Now in Delhi. They do some really good crockery. We have some as well if you ever feel like. Uh, but the, uh, at tea timers, try and pick up these steel ones. You also get the plastic ones, and you get the wooden ones, which are just like single timers. try and pick up something which has like three three elements like three different minutes so that makes it easier rather than having a whole collection of it so yeah okay. also i have a wonderful question from kartik banota kartik would you like yeah, to go ahead to see him yeah yeah hi good morning anam hi kartik so actually i wanted to ask there you know many tea brands popping up now and uh, you have oolong and green uh, going mainstream right so uh, when you buy tea so how do you decide with what brand you like to go because you know they have some like really creative ones uh, i mean the blends coming up which which uh, sounds intriguing but then not really so yeah i know what you mean i know what you mean so what you have to do is as i said karthik if you read the label and you figure out so in the label normally if it has a if it's from a tea estate remember this the estate should be written in front because it has a lot of relevance that they giving you the source from where it's coming it's like picking a bottle of wine and uh, uh, you know knowing which vineyard and which year so the minute you have a source and it's written pick that up pick up something that is from the source itself 
When it comes down to infusions, also remember when you look at the back, they normally have the ingredients written. So the ingredients, when it talks, the minute it says something like a flavor, I wouldn't say that you should go in for something like that. Because the minute it says flavor and it, you'll, you'll get something like crazy stuff. There's something that I read was uh, tiramisu. And uh, I mean, uh, name it. It's just um, some, I don't know, weird ones. So try to avoid those. Don't have any of those. I mean, uh, the fact that you're having something artificial when you're looking after your health and you're going for your Zumba and you're doing your X, Y, Z and you're, look, you're doing your yoga and then you're having something that you have at least three or four times a day. I mean, I don't think any of us have just one cup or if we do, well, there might be some, but most of us have a lot of number, a cup of, cup of teas. So if you're having tea that is so frequently you're having it and you're having something that isn't really healthy or beneficial for you, just avoid it. Even though if it smells well, like the flower garden, but still see, try and figure out whether the ingredient that they mentioned is there or not. Okay, perfect. Thank you for asking, yeah. this, uh, answering. You're welcome. Anamika, I think we're through with all the questions we had in the chat box. If someone else has a question, um, if they'd just like to go ahead and ask. Yeah, I I had a small little question. I just heard you mention about the tiramisu flavor. So I just want to ask you a question. What's the strangest um, flavor that you've come across of a tea? I think it'll be something. I remember ages ago, okay, this wasn't, uh, this wasn't, um, uh, um, this was a milk tea, okay? And I'm not a milk tea person. I'm not particularly fond of it uh, because more of the fact that it coats my palate and then tasting becomes a bit of an issue. Um, there, was a, there was a cafe that was serving milk tea that had coconut milk, condensed milk, cow's milk, and God knows what not. That had kind of, they had kind of made it a dudwali chai with that. For me, it was beyond my comprehension. Oh, that you, yeah, yeah, like coconut condensed. It would be like like solid pudding out happening out there. So beyond me. Then there's one I remember. There was a, somebody who was doing it. Um, it is a good, now you still have a lot of people doing a whole lot of newer flavors. It's not particularly my cup of tea. But this was around, I think, five years ago or six years ago. Somebody had taking out a flavor that was to do with cucumber. And it was a hot tea, which was to do with cucumber. And I just couldn't get it. I was like, not that I tried it, but I just couldn't comprehend that. How could you have a flavor that is cucumber based? That too hot. You can still think of it cold, but then no. <laughs> so yeah. But I do love, um, uh, I'm, I'm kind of answering it on my own. <laughs> but if you ask me what I love, as far as, uh, so I love my pine wood smoke. It's a smoked tea. It's a beautiful, nice, black, full-bodied, brisk, dark tea. And you can, um, you can just pair it with a nice chocolate or a nice smoked cheese. You can just have it by itself. Or if you like a little bit of maybe a whiskey to it, add whatever you feel like. But it's a beautiful tea. So that I love a lot. We, we have it here. Thank you, Anamika. We have a couple of questions from Darshana. Darshana, would you like to go ahead and ask these? Um, or would you like me to read them sure, out? Sure, sure. Okay. Um, uh, thank you Hi. so much, Anamika. Hi. Um, I wanted to ask you, um, I, I love teas and then sometimes I end up with more than I can handle. So <laughs> I have some uh, that are sort of dated. So what does right. one do with dated or old tea? Excuse me. So, uh, so you're talking about have they expired? Are they like around a year old or something like that? Um, yes. Uh, not all have expired, but they're close to a year old. Yeah. So one of the things that I uh, have often told people is you can infuse it. You can still put in hot water. And then what you do is with the leaf, you can just put in your plants if you have plants at home. Excellent. But that's that's have very it. helpful. You can't have it. So infuse it to do what then? So you, so you put it in your plants. It's like a manure. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, oh, you, a, you're saying pot. infuse it so that you can use it for the plants. Yeah, the, the leaves. plants don't yeah. have it. Just use it as a manure for the plants. Great, That's great. Fine. Thank you so much. You're and welcome. my second question was, yeah, yeah. Uh, you had mentioned earlier about a cold uh, brew slash iced tea yes. version. Um, right. How does one reach out to you to learn that? Uh, my number, my uh, website, uh, you know, my email ID, 
I hope to do a workshop for that soon, um, as soon as the spring comes in and we'll do some nice floral, uh, you know, cold teas. So, and even otherwise, if you feel like doing it, uh, like just during these days, just reach out. I'd be more than happy to share a recipe and how to go about it. That's great. Thank you so much. I just started yeah, yeah. following you on Instagram. So, <laughs> yeah. Thanks. So much. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, there's just a note for all the attendees. Um, Prerna has placed a link to the Tea Whisperer Instagram page, which you can follow on the chat box. And Malini Gol had a question, which yes. we're again returning to the question of proportions. What is the amount of green tea, leaf, tea leaves for a cup of tea? Malini, if there's something else you'd like to add? Hi, oh, Malini. Uh, hi. <laughs> Um, no, that's the question because uh, sometimes, uh, you know, we're buying different brands and I don't know exactly how much tea, uh, how much tea should you put for a good cup of tea? Right. Just, I mean, I know it's experiment, but uh, on an but, average, what would you do? So two grams for 200 ml. So, um, so this mm. is around 180 ml. Should I, I? I don't have anything right now that would yeah, give you a, yeah. But two hundred ml to, would give you like add two grams to it, like a one taste teaspoon of tea to it. And always okay. one very important thing, which kind of um, slipped mm. off. And I'm glad you asked. Mm -hmm. Whenever you're putting it in a pot or any kind of utensil where you mm -hmm. want to use the tea, because you never put it on fire, right? So Correct. you take the tea leaf and you add the hot water over it. Okay. okay. So then it doesn't float because the minute you add the leaf on the water that already exists, then you have to stir it and it gets started yeah. start cold and all of that. So add the tea leaf into the teapot or whatever vessel you have and then mm. add the water over it. And then in, oh. don't forget the time. Time is crucial. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Very, very Thanks crucial. so much. Yeah. You're welcome. Thanks. Thanks. We do have another question um, by Vishal. Any anecdotes or experiences of yours exploring different kinds of tea in various parts of India at small chai thelas? And I also right. want to do a shout out to Smriti, who had asked, who placed one of the earliest comments in the session. Uh, she'd said Kenyan and Ethiopian teas are also amazing. So just be right. to hear your thoughts on both of these. Right. So um, the first one you have to repeat, uh, what, what is the first question about? Vishal, would you like to go ahead and ask the uh, question? Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, so, Anamika, what, what a fantastic tea wisdom you have. Thank you so much. It's really engaging and interesting session. Uh, my question was uh, kind of slightly different. Like, for us Indians, tea is also a social experience. It is like, you know, meeting people, uh, chai and bate and, you know, gappe and all of that. So, right. just wanted to, like, uh, know that do you have, do, would you like to share any anecdotes or experiences of having tea in different parts of India, like, you know, in those small chai yes. thelas. Maybe, yes. you know, they don't know technically much about tea, but these are, like, a very yeah, passionate people right. of you know, tea. So, any, right. any, any experiences that you would like to share uh, with us? Right. So, so I so agree with you, you know, tea is such an integral part of our lives. Uh, and that's the reason when I say when you want to choose your tea, choose, just choose the tea that connects to your heart. You know, something because most of the time, uh, we are creatures of habits, right? And we also have a lot of memories attached to whatever we do. So if there is something a certain kind of tea that you like, and you associate with it, no matter who, which familiar, which whoever tells you that, oh, my God, what are you having? Don't, don't even listen. Listen from one and take it out from the other because that's close to your heart. Okay, so just have that. So one of the times I remember, this was ages ago. Uh, I had gone to this small little town called Bejnath. It's in Bihar. There's a, uh, it's, a, it's a religious uh, town, so to speak. And in the morning, those are days when we were kids. And I mean, not kids as such, but yeah, not, not this old. Uh, and um, I remember we were waiting outside in queue because we had to enter a shop and it was early in the morning and I still so vividly remember that the entire frame, that scene, it was where two roads met in the corner. There was this gentleman who was sitting in an elevated platform and it was winters, early morning sun with us, you know, just streaming in and cold and everybody sitting on the shawl and newspaper in this bench. And this gentleman, 
made the tea that, you know, that I haven't seen elsewhere, but I'm sure that there must be other people who are doing it. So basically what he was doing is he had this huge blackish cloth because I turned black because of the tea. And there were lots of tea leaves that were put in and that had been like literally been brewed. And what he would do is there was on the other pot, there was um, milk that was being boiled. It was on continuous boil and he kept kind of just taking it up and down. And then what he did was he took the cloth that had the tea leaves in it and put it over those kulhars and he took the milk and he poured it over the cloth and the and the the distillation that happened was dark black tea but it had milk already in it so he wasn't boiling it separately but he was just pouring over it and it would just kind of just go through and you had your chai and it was amazing i've never seen anybody else like any other place that did something like that but i'm sure there must be but that was something that stayed in my mind for a long time, even now, I just think of it. The first time I think of street and I think of chai and I think of nukkar and I think of everybody getting together, that particular frame is so vivid in my memory. It's just right there. So it's amazing. Yeah. Very you know interesting. Yeah. Thank, <laughs> so you. Now, Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Yeah. yeah. And with that, I'd like to bring the session to a close. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. Thank, Thank you, you so Anamika. This has been such a wonderful start to our weekend. Um, on you. behalf of Serendipity Arts Foundation, I'd like to thank you for this wonderful panel. Uh, thank you, you to so our much. It's been such a pleasure. I want to thank all of you for taking all your time and being there um, and uh, just having a fondness for tea. I'm so glad. Thank you so much. Thank you, Prina. Thank you. Uh, please do check out serendipityartsvirtual.com for future programming. We look forward to seeing all of you in our future workshops and sessions. Thank you, Anamika. Thank you, everyone.